Oh, okay. We're getting a little better. We came in right at the right time where I was pouring a drink, um, which we often do on liquid lunch, sometimes a little earlier, sometimes a little later. But this is the perfect time. You're watching liquid lunch on Newsmax TV, and it will be a liquid lunch from here on in indeed. And uh, if anyone's been on this show, um, they've had a drink here and there once in a while. There's not a single person that's ever been on this show who's had more cocktails with me than this man sitting right to my left and on the left. Mr. Tim Collins joins me again. He's the general manager of Bobby Vans. He's one of the... Tim, uh, Question Tequila, as you know, has been my sponsor for some time now. They just came out with this new tequila that's the Extra Añejo. It's a five-year reserve. And they make it in uh, Jack Daniels barrels. So I want you to give me, it's, it's chilled and it's in a chilled wine glass. Absolutely the wrong glass, I know that. But uh, please uh, let me know what you think. Yeah. And they are our sponsor, remember that. That is formidable. <laughs> Magnifique. Magnifique, he went with. Perfect. So, uh, you know, this guy's a tough adversary. He's my really one of my good friends. And uh, oftentimes I get a little too far off the reserva reservation with my right-wingism and my Trumpism. Um, but then I go into Bobby Vans after the show and I say this or that. And he gives me some conscience. He gives me things, um, not that I always agree with him, uh, but he does give me thoughtful things that I must consider and it expands my brain. And the bar is set very low for him to expand my brain because we're starting from a really small brain. But uh, you've always been a good friend. I like to toast to you. And uh, you do actually make my commentary better because I add in, you know, your thoughts sometimes. But uh, I want to ask you about something I'm witnessing now that I cannot believe. Hillary Clinton has emerged from the shadows. The box has popped open like the tails from the crypt. And she's popped out again. And now her main goal in life is to attack Tulsi Gabbard, who's at like 2% in the polls. What the heck is going on here? Well, I think that uh, what, what she's seen, really, I think what we've all seen is that the same Russian bots and trolls have really locked on to Tulsi Gabbard. And what they're trying to do is kind of head off at the pass what occurred in the uh, 2016 election with Jill Stein, where, you know, Jill Stein was able to siphon off 2% of the vote, right? 2% of the vote Thank made the difference in three states, and that's why we have Donald Trump as our president right now. And I think that... Uh, you know, for to have a peripheral candidate, uh, you know, pretty much setting up what will be a third party candidate candidacy is something that uh, we're all being warned about. Well, I mean, Russia, 16 intelligence agencies said Russia messed with our elections and okay. that they're continuing to do so. Okay, and this me, is one way me, that they're doing let it. Let me ask you this. We heard in the midterm elections about the blue wave when all these new progressives came in and they were cheering about... Um, how many women and how many first-time candidates and how many minorities and all this other good stuff, okay? Here's Tulsi Gabbard. She admirably and honorably served our armed forces. She put her life on the line for the liberties and freedoms that you and I enjoy every day, like drinking Question Tequila on uh, TV. Uh, she's a woman of color. So you would think a woman of color who served our country admirably and honorably, you'd think you wouldn't attack her and accuse her of being a Russian spy. I, I just, I don't get it. I think she's got all the bona fides that you'd be rolling her out there and saying, this is what we're looking for. I, I actually don't think she, that she's attacking her for being a Russian spy. I think she's attacking her for being the candidate of the Russian spies. I mean, they are flooding her Facebook feed, they're flood, flooding social media, Twitter, it's the Russian trolls and bots. Obviously, so, Tulsi Gabbard's busy in Iowa trying to get elected, trying to get some some attention. She's not the one pulling the uh, the levers at uh, at Twitter, you know, sending thousands of well, tweets this, out. It, it, uh, you know, shouldn't Hillary be more focused on things like why she destroyed thirty three thousand emails while on the subpoena? Why she bashed five phones up with a hammer while on the subpoena? Shouldn't she be more worried about things like that than if 
Russian bots and trolls are making ads for Tulsi Gabbard. She's at 2% in the polls. I mean, I, I, to me, it doesn't sound like right. the most important thing. I mean, I mean, if six months from now we're sitting here and we're going to be witnessing Tulsi Gabbard as our third-party candidate, then we have a real problem. Then we no, know... We'll be opening champagne bottles because that's a guarantee that Trump wins real election. Well, uh, there's, no, woman, there's no question. There's no question. Uh, as a third-party candidate... Will there's no question it would bolster Donald Trump's... Uh, uh, candidacy. I mean, perhaps maybe Donald Trump would want to consider her instead of Mike Pence as a running mate. Not the worst thing I've ever heard. I got to be honest with I you. I mean, but then what would your friends on the left say? They would say, "Now we have two candidates that are colluding with Russia, the president and the vice." The one thing they haven't accused Pence of yet is colluding with the Russians. So that, that, I mean, maybe it's not the worst thing. Just Timmy had a good idea. I ring the bell. <laughs> See, as soon as, you, as soon as you dump a little tequila in them, then all well, of a sudden... And it's the, great the good tequila. Stuff. I have to say that. This is excellent tequila. <laughs> yeah. it's the, it must be the bourbon barrels. Well, I'm sure it's that. And um, I'm sure your commentary is skewed just slightly by um, my boss, uh, Lenny, who's over there, who got me the sponsorship from Quest Joe Tequila. So we can't say it. <laughs> good man. <laughs> good man, nah, too. Without a doubt. And... Uh, when you know when you're a small fledgling TV show just getting off the ground, you're you know this unusual Italian American kid from Staten Island. It's not what you usually see on TV. And then when I pitched the network that I got a tequila sponsor, for some reason they went with it. Um, but it definitely adds flavor and value mm. to the show every day. And uh, thank you, Question, Jason. You're wonderful. We're looking forward to you getting out here and being in studio very soon. Jason Fandrich is the CEO, and he just sent us up a nice little care package with the reservers. Um, he doesn't always sell, send the Anejo XO, but uh, hopefully we'll get that for now on. Last thing I want to talk to you about, um, AOC has finally, oh, we have 15 seconds, we have five, we have four, okay. Um, Timmy's going to come back in segment six. We call segment six the WTF, what's the facts? because Frank usually fact checks all the mistakes I made. So I'm gonna leave myself open to Timmy taking a few shots at me and hopefully a few shots with me on Liquid Lunch. But Suleiman and Kalyanti T are gonna be back here with some unbelievable couture fashions and jewelry like you've never seen. Watching Liquid Lunch, we'll be back right after this.